Okay. Okay. Thank you, Paola. So, uh, buonasera a tutti. Hello. I am Paolo Roma, and together with the other speakers, I have arranged this uh, symposium. I ran the stuff, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. And I thank Paola Rigor that uh, uh, is our discussant and that will carry on this meeting. I briefly present the topic of this symposium. As a part of the conference on a new horizon in a psychological assessment, this symposium aims to present uh, innovation related to the evaluation of the examiner's responses uh, style uh, when completing tests or undergoing interviews. Uh, the new strategies uh, developed for this purpose could support expert evaluation of personality and the symptoms credibility. Um, in this uh, symposium, we have four contributions. Uh, in the first, uh, Matza will present an integrated machine learning models on self-report tests and uh, behavioral measures. Uh, in the second, uh, Lorenzoni will illustrate the results of uh, a simulation design uh, study comparing uh, a remote and in-person administration of a personal, personality assessment inventory. Uh, following uh, Ferraris will explain the effect of symptoms coaching and test coaching on test results. And uh, finally, Silla and colleague will compare the result of partial micro expression uh, classification by humans uh, to the classification obtained by artificial intelligence. Uh, we have a total of uh, 90 minutes, uh, so I think that the presentation can last about 15 minutes, and after each, uh, we will have a short forum, a short discussion to better understand the results, the practical implication, and the further uh, develops. Uh, now I leave the floor to our discussant, uh, Professor Paola Rigo. Thank you. Thank you, Paola, for your introduction. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Paolo Arrigo. I'm an assistant professor of the University of Padua. My research field is pretty far from the topic of this symposium, so I'm very interested. I'm a psychodynamic psychologist and I'm neuroscientist in applicative neuroscience. So we can start with the first speaker, and the first speaker is Mazza Cristina. Massa Cristina, okay, so you are online. Nice to meet you. Okay, maybe you can try to share your screen. Okay. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, okay. Okay. I remind you that you are uh, you have a fifth. In a minute, and then maybe five minutes for questions and comments. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Professor Sarigo, and uh, um, I want to thank Paolo uh, to give us the opportunity to be here uh, this afternoon. And um, I'm going to present a research resulting from the joint efforts of four universities that aims to find an effective strategy to identify those who, during a personality assessment, tend to, to respond in a socially desirable way. So um, research actually has shown that a surprising number of psychological assessments in nice stakes evaluative settings, uh, for example, we could think parenting skill evaluation or driving uh, exams, or again, personal selection, uh, are invalid due to respondents' tendency to uh, provide of an overly positive self-descriptions, uh, minimizing um, negative aspects of their personality. And this phenomenon is shown as, uh, is known as socially desirable responding. Um, 
SDR is uh, one of the most widespread and pervasive sources of bias uh, in high stake evaluative settings um, with uh, an estimated uh, prevalence of up to 50% in uh, personnel selection and 70% in uh, forensic settings. However, considering the social and economic cost of SDR, uh, its detection is an important uh, field of research. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, lit the literature on SDR is not as rich uh, as uh, its um, practical impact would merit, uh, I mean, uh, and instruments to identify SDR are limited. For example, we know the Marlon Crone social desirability scales, or again, um, the balanced inventory of desirable responding, also known the Paulus uh, deception scale PDS. That is, that are the most commonly used standalone scales to detect uh, the socially desirable responding. Um, however, um, other measures uh, used to um, detect, to unveil SDR are um, embedded validity scale uh, in personality questionnaire. I mean, uh, the LIE, the L scale of the MMPI2, or again, the K scale of the same questionnaire, or the uh, PIM of the PAI, the Personality Assessment Inventory, and finally, the virtuous responding, responding of the um, psychopathic personality inventory in uh, its uh, um, revised form. However, <laughs> the main limitation of uh, the self-report questionnaires uh, and their validity scales, obviously, is the uh, transparency of uh, the items, such that test takers, the respondents, uh, can easily answer according to uh, their goals, their motives. Um, uh, for these reasons, uh, researchers have attempted to find uh, behavioral and direct uh, methods of uh, detecting SDR, uh, analyzing, first of all, for example, um, the response time and, or time latency, um, response latency, sorry, and employing uh, uh, mouse and eye tracking uh, uh, technologies. So, uh, the present study. The present study uh, aimed at investigating the combined uh, utility of mouse and eye tracking for SDR identification, together with uh, uh, the standard T scores and uh, uh, the most known response time. We uh, employed uh, uh, within subject uh, simulation design in which uh, every participant uh, completed the, the experimental task um, uh, twice. Uh, so um, following uh, two sets of instruction balanced, first uh, responding honestly, and then instructed to present themselves uh, in a more favorable uh, way. We tested also um, the differences um, in, um, between SDR and HONEST in T-scores, response time, mouse, and I variables. Also, and this is uh, the novelty of our study, applying artificial intelligence technique to develop a, um, an integrated model uh, that will be uh, capable of detecting SDR with uh, maximal accuracy uh, on the basis of explicit uh, scale scores that uh, we usually uh, have, temporal and spatial kinematics uh, indicators, and eye movements. So uh, the sample um, was composed of 85 participants. It, will, it was a... Uh, um, within study design. Uh, they had to uh, click the start button in the center of the screen to initiate the presentation of each uh, item of uh, the MPI 2 uh, L and K scales, a uh, total amount of uh, 44 items, and then had to respond true or false 
uh, obviously via uh, a mouse. Uh, during uh, um, the experimental task, several variables associated with, uh, um, I mean, mouse and eye movement in spatial and uh, temporal terms were automatically uh, registered. Uh, here you can find uh, the list of all the uh, considered um, variables. What about the results? So we found a, a significant effect for condition. So uh, as expected, uh, participants in, in the SDR condition obtain significantly higher T-scores on L and K scale, confirming uh, all the previous results. Uh, about the uh, regarding the, the mouse uh, tracking, we found that SDR was were um, slower and uh, made wide, wider trajectories than honest. So um, this is completely uh, to be uh, correct. Uh, this is completely true for um, the L scale items and not uh, partially true for the uh, K scale. Once again, confirming, uh, confirming uh, all the previous results. So, as uh, a third step, we inspected the differences in a variables, considering uh, the screen divided into uh, areas of interest and comparing the two um, areas of selected and unselected response. Taken together, these results suggest that uh, um, socially desirable respondents uh, uh, devoted less attention to the selected response and more attention to the unselected response in um, the area of, his, of interest uh, portion of, of the screen. As regard, finally, the predictive model, uh, all the 32 variables for um, L and K scale uh, when were considered in uh, statistical analysis were uh, entered in uh, the feature selection. So the uh, CFS identified six uh, that you can see on the screen um, of them, six predictors, uh, as the best set of um, predictors. But what about the accuracy? Uh, well, as you can see, um, the accuracy was uh, stable um, between the different uh, classifiers, uh, ranging from 70 maybe to 18% uh, uh, in the test set. So the rule used um, by uh, one um, algorithm, algorithm uh, the uh, J48 uh, decision tree um, algorithm was based on only two um, scale, only two um, uh, variables, the T scores of L scale and the blink frequency. The blink frequency uh, referred to uh, the unselected area of area of interest of L scale. So the L scale uh, is uh, is uh, very important in with uh, its T score and unselected area about uh, blink uh, frequency. Well, um, I'm going to end. Uh, and despite uh, obviously the, the, the limitation of this study, uh, it, it was a simulation study with a within subject design. Uh, we, um, we can uh, say that new SDR str assessment strategies like uh, that, like, like this, like uh, this I show you uh, now, could really support professional, for example, the court in different settings, forensic uh, or personal selection, by indicating the real, the um, authentic nature of the assessment uh, data. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Cristina. Do you have any questions, comments?
Okay, maybe I can. Uh, I have a few comments, uh, no, and uh, about uh, no the limitation, no. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the situation was not ecological, no, in ecologic. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. So, can you uh, discuss more this point uh, about uh, the experimental situation and uh, and uh, and the difficulty maybe to investigate the same uh, variables and factor in uh, more ecological settings? Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um... Our study was a simulation study, so um, participants uh, uh, were asked to respond uh, um, in, in a first condition, honestly, uh, imagining to, to be a candidate for a, an, ideal, uh, an ideal candidate of a work. Um, in the second, uh, com in the second part, uh, the same participants have to respond to the, the forty-four uh, items uh, um, uh, in ten with the tendency to uh, give an overly positive description of uh, his or her personality, uh, thinking about. Uh, uh, the selection, the personal selection, uh, thinking uh, about uh, mm, the possibility to be selected as uh, uh, and to, to have the work. Uh, so this is a simulation study. Uh, and mm, is the first step because uh, uh, we have to uh, to form to um, to build the um, the real the uh, all the indicators and then we have to test them in uh, ecological yeah. setting yeah. for yeah. example yeah. Person... you mean it's too yeah. early at this moment to translate your paradigm to a more ecological setting exactly yes but uh, uh, I even know their comment no you didn't consider uh, individual factors. For example, people, uh, did you check for the, maybe people can be embarrassed, no? In, in doing, in, in attending your instruction. Maybe, uh, so did you evaluate the, the feeling of people before and after uh, attending the task? In order to evaluate the stress, no? No, uh, we didn't evaluate it, these uh, individual uh, factors uh, that you describe, uh, and uh, we could insert in uh, further research uh, paradigm because um, I think uh, we think that uh, could be interesting um, to to test a, a, a sort of baseline of uh, personal feelings about the, this situation. Yes. The situation, no? Exactly. Uh, the fact is that uh, we um, we employed a uh, within subject um, design uh, um, properly for uh, controlling individual differences, uh, for example, in eye movements or um, uh, mouse movements. So uh, the, the um, main limitation uh, of uh, within subject design design like this uh, was that uh, um, the person, the participants uh, read the items twice. So maybe uh, could be uh, a, a, um, a learning effect about this. But um, to, to answer your question, we didn't measure the, the personality, uh, the personal feelings about the, the, the assessment situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last question, because I'm full of that, really, for me. Uh, do you think that uh, <clears throat> expertise of people in playing with video games, uh, no, so they are more, uh, more, more, they are more, more trained, no, in, uh, in interacting with uh, uh, digital devices, can be a confounding factor? Honestly, I don't think because uh, um, the uh, 
the stimulus on the screen uh, was uh, were very simple. So um, there, there was only the text of the, the item text uh, and uh, th the, um, uh, through and false uh, uh, in the um, uh, upper side of the, 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 screen, the screen. So um, I don't think that uh, it was so, um, uh, it required so um, capacities, uh, technological capacities, I, I, I don't think so. Okay. Questions, comments? No. Okay, I would like to thank you. For thank you too. Very interesting. So the next speaker is Alessandro Lorenzoni. Okay, Alessandro is here. I can unmute. I think. I think. Okay. Hello everyone, it's nice to be, to be here today. I'm Alessandro Lorenzoni and today I'm going to talk about the positive response bias with the personality assessment inventory. The focus will be especially on the effect of administering uh, the test in a remote versus an uh, uh, in-person setting. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? It's a little better now? Okay, thank you. Um, the focus will be specifically uh, on the effect of administering the... Uh, I think we are. Voilà. Okay, thank you. So, um, hello again. I'm Alessandro, and uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, positive response bias with the personality assessment inventory. Uh, the focus will be specifically on the effect of the uh, test, administering the test in a remote versus an in person uh, setting. Remote administration are included in the so-called telepsychology, and uh, the definition is just to give you the framework we are actually working uh, within. Uh, and the most important thing to keep in mind is that uh, uh, we, as a psychologist and uh, as assessor, uh, should be sure that validity of uh, a remote administration is uh, at least similar to the in-person uh, administration. It cannot, be uh, it, ca it cannot be taken for granted that uh, there are no differences between uh, the two settings. And uh, as a matter of fact, we need uh, more studies to explore the possible implication of changing the standard standardized administration uh, procedure. As you have seen from the title of this presentation, uh, we will focus on the positive response bias with the PIA. The positive response bias is also depicted as faking good and simulated adjustment. The positive response bias is usually described with uh, three related terms, defensiveness, uh, social desirability, and uh, impression management. In our study, we are focused more on the last two, social desirability and impression management. Um, here you can see the uh, indices uh, that were included in the original PIA. We have the uh, positive impression scale, the PIM, a nine item scale. Those items were uh, rarely endorsed in the PIA normative sample and uh, higher score indicate the higher likelihood uh, of the respondents attempting to portray themselves as relative, relatively free of uh, shortcoming. The second one is the uh, defensiveness index. And um, mm, this is a sum of uh, nine PIA profile uh, characteristic involving uh, among 13 PIA scales and subscale. For example, uh, we can see that uh, the dominant scale and the aggression scale, if there is a difference of more than uh, 10 discourse point, uh, is uh, a plus one to the death uh, uh, scale. 
the third one is the uh, Cashel discriminant function that is based on a weighted combination of six uh, scale uh, scores um, uh, that you can see in the brackets. And um, the, the weight are based on the results of a discriminant function equation obtained by Cashel and colleagues uh, in, the 1990, in their 1995 study. Uh, with the pi plus uh, a couple of years ago, um, two more uh, new uh, measures of positive impression man management were added. The on the facedness index uh, employs the same strategy of the Cashel discriminant function, while the positive distortion scale is, uh, uh, in, a some, in some way, the opposite of the pos uh, positive impression scale, uh, as it is a scale comprised uh, of items frequently endorsed by psychiatric uh, inpatient and they describe relatively mild uh, clinical symptoms. The assumption was that uh, positive failure would be unlikely to respond uh, even to this kind of item. So the PDS is a sort of a reverse score scale. Um, we could say something like that. Uh, here you can see uh, the detection strategies described uh, in the literature. The PAI measure uh, employ different strategies to be more effective in detecting fake and good presentation. The positive uh, distortion scale, the first one, uh, uses a denial of patient characteristic strategy. As I already explained, the, the, it capitalizes on research demonstrating that certain attributes are more uh, commonly endorsed by clinical population. The defensiveness index, the CDF and the HDI, uh, all use a spurious pattern of psychological adjustment. Um, this strategy relies on the fact that certain scale configuration are characteristic of defensiveness, uh, but are very uncommon in clinical and um, community, po community population. Uh, the last one, uh, the positive impression scale, uses a denial of personal faults uh, strategy that, that is based on the idea that uh, persons minimizing maladjustment take this to the extreme and deny any shortcoming or uh, non-virtuous behavior. Uh, here you can see the cutoff score suggested by the literature uh, for each of the PIA measure. The positive distortion scale and the uh, on defensiveness index, uh, these two, uh, are uh, just uh, are only pro provisional uh, until more validation of both indices will be available, and therefore the cutoff uh, refers to, to standards deviation uh, above the mean, the 70 T scores uh, of the US uh, normative sample. So our study, uh, our study aimed at examining the positive response bias in a sample of Italian adults and attempted to clarify the differences in self-enhancing presentation between the in-person and remote administration. Participants were asked to imagine themselves as ideal candidates uh, for employment in a managerial position. Uh, a standard procedure for, si for, for, for simulation design, participants were given the, the vignette you are seeing on the slide and uh, don't be worry, I will not read it. Participants completed uh, the social demographic variables questionnaire and then uh, the PAI. After that, in the post-test questionnaire, we asked participants whether they positively uh, distorted their presentation just to make sure uh, that uh, they follow the instruction uh, we gave them. So uh, this is uh, our final sample. We collected uh, 100 protocols, but one participant was excluded because uh, they admitted during the post-test questionnaire that uh, they did not simulate their uh, responses. The two uh, samples were balanced in terms of age and gender, whereas in the in-person sample uh, showed a lower level of education and uh, a higher number of uh, married and uh, cohabitant participants. Here you can see the correlation between, between measures of uh, positive impression management. Uh, all measures correlate with each other, uh, except for the CDF. This result was uh, unexpected and uh, in contrast to previous study. Overall, the correlation effect size are between uh, medium and uh, large. Uh, and even controlling for the effect of the two settings, uh, it did not change the significativity and the direction of the correlation. What could, what, uh, could we say uh, looking at this table is that having multiple measures relatively independent uh, from each other should be considered a benefit uh, uh, as it improves the incremental validity uh, when used, used in uh, combination. Here I'm showing you uh, the mean and the standard deviation of the five indices, both uh, in person and uh, remote administration. 
and um, the defensiveness index and the HDI uh, are the only measure statistically different between the in-person and the remote administration. With an effect size categorized as small for uh, the DEF and the medium for the HDI. However, uh, controlling for the effect of uh, uh, marital status and education, we found that only the uh, on defensiveness index produced significantly different mean score between the two settings. Here you can see the sensitivity of the original PI measures. The sensitivity is the proportion of the sorted responders uh, detected by a specific cutoff score. Uh, I highlighted the uh, cutoff score suggested by the PA manual. The indices were able to detect positive presentation at higher rate in remote setting for almost all the selected scores. The difference between the two settings is especially notable in the positive impression scale and uh, in the defensiveness index. The trend is similar with the on defensiveness index. And uh, again, there is quite a difference between the two settings. As you can see, uh, the, remote sam uh, the remote sample was detected uh, at a double rate than uh, the in-person setting. Mm. The positive distortion scale on the other end showed uh, higher sensibility in the in-person setting uh, on lower values, uh, and uh, the trend is inverted on higher scores. In this specific study, uh, we don't have an honest sample to compare uh, the specificity of the measures, but we have another study that has been presented the last week at the 2023 uh, APA convention, where the results showed no difference between settings uh, in the in-person and remote when participants are asked to respond honestly. This is true for all the five indices. Uh, if there are no differences in, uh, the specific, uh, in the specificity between setting with honest respondents, uh, and at the same time, the, specific, the specificity is higher in the remote setting with self-enhancing participants, uh, we could infer that uh, the setting influences the participants' performance uh, only when they are trying to control the, their impression on others. Moving on to the uh, measure of positive impression management to the full PA profile, uh, we could take a look at the statistically different uh, PA scales in the two samples. Um, uh, scales that represent the traits considerable favorable uh, were higher in the remote administration. You can see Manji, DOM, and uh, WARM. Uh, Manji uh, is a measure of grandiosity and uh, it could be interpreted as a measure of self-esteem, while uh, uh, the last two are uh, the two in interpersonal scale. On the other hand, uh, angst could be considered an unfavorable trait and it is significantly lower in the remote sample. We can see that our remote participants were a little more extreme in their presentation in both directions. In this slide, we can also understand better why the Young Defensiveness Index works so well in distinguishing the two samples. Um, three of the seven uh, scales use, uh, used in the discriminant function equation are the, full, uh, the only full clinical scales that is different between the two settings, so angst, uh, DOM, and WARM. Here you can see, um, I'm showing you the full paper file for the two samples together. I wanted to focus on a couple of things. Uh, the first one is that uh, the scale above 50 uh, T-score are the MAN, ANT, and ERIT-SAR, and the two interpersonal scales. And uh, as I already said, uh, this could be considered as positive threats. Uh, on the other hand, all the clinical scale that could consider negative are below 50 T-score. Uh, so if you think about the ideal manager, uh, this, this person should be self-sufficient, able to take the decision and lead the other, the other employees, uh, but also it should be dependable. So uh, if, we, if we follow this stereotype, uh, our participant try to simulate uh, this, uh, this, this, this um, stereotype and it is reflected in our uh, PAI results. This uh, exact, exact scale configuration was already described by Mori and colleagues in the 1998 uh, paper. As you can see, uh, the two uh, profiles were uh, pretty similar. Um, 
Obviously, uh, the study has potential limitations, such as the ecological validity of the study. Our participants were not really interested in the proposed uh, managerial position. And, uh, but this is uh, usually how simulation design uh, are actually designed. And uh, nevertheless, we should also study situation where the stakes of the evaluation are high and real, such as during the selection of law enforcement and uh, police personnel. An underline of research that could be explored is the use of uh, coach participants, uh, because the literature shows that uh, PAI's original measure of positive impression management are highly vulnerable to coached uh, participants. So further, further uh, research is needed. Um, this study showed several differences in participants' behavior between the in-person and remote administration, and the results suggested that remote participants give a more distorted image of themselves than uh, the in-person participants. We hypothesized that participants find it easier to uh, construct a coherent narrative in the in-person uh, uh, setting than in the remote setting. In the first case, participants had the complete PAI item list, and so they were able to read previous item and respond to new item accordingly. On the other hand, the computerized remote administration shows only one item at a time, and so the cognitive load to remember all the previous item is much higher. So based on our results, it could be advisable to administer DPAI remotely to maximize its ability to, um, in detecting fake good performances. Thanks for the attention. But to emphasize first, to get information, maybe I love to keep it an information about the, the procedures. Yeah. Uh, can you can provide more details about the remote and in present procedures? Yeah, uh, the procedure was uh, similar. That is, uh, uh, participants were given the vignette and uh, they uh, completed the PIA, and after that, they completed the post test questionnaire. In, the, uh, in both versions, the examiner were uh, present. Uh, in the remote version, was uh, virtually present. So what it it was all uh, all the time was uh, you know uh, on the webcam looking at the participants. So uh, their presence were always uh, pre uh, you know uh, the the participants were were always able to see uh, the examiner while uh, completing the test. Mm -hmm. So they were not uh, leave alone, leave the alone, and uh, okay, that was the nice. Yeah. Because I was not sure if the participants were totally free. No, no, no. They were controlled by the uh, examiner, and uh, if they have any, have any question of uh, need some help, uh, so the, the examiner was, was always present. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Angelica Ferraris. Okay, is it? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Angelica Ferraris with the University of Turin, and today I'm here to present to you a study um, that is detecting symptom and test coach simulators with the inventory of problems 29 and the inventory of problems memory. So uh, it is known that malingering has an enormous cost in society, both economically and socially. So within the legal and forensic psychology, it is not unusual to come across uh, uh, cases of coached malingering. Uh, literature distinguishes between two different forms of coaching, which are symptom coaching and task coaching. We talk about symptom coaching uh, when people are given instructions on how to feign uh, 
symptomatology about specific disorders, while we talk about test coaching when people are given instructions on how to elude the, the detection strategies that tests use to detect feigners. So while symptom coaching is uh, widely studied in literature, test coaching is poorly studied. So one of the last studied studies on, on this phenomena uh, was this one, which investigated the impact of different forms of coaching on the structured um, inventory of malingered symptomatology. Uh, in the present study, we used uh, two different measures to evaluate negative response bias, the inventory of problems 29 and the inventory of problems memory. The first one is a symptom validity test that measures non-credible mental and, cog and cognitive symptoms. It comprises 26 items that assess coping mechanisms and three items that are uh, that pose mathematical and logical problems. It gives back a false disorder probability score, which ranges from zero to one, uh, with the higher values, uh, meaning that uh, uh, the person is uh, more probably being um, finding, feigning. Um, while the inventory of problems memory is a performance validity test that is based on the items of the IUP 29, so it must be administered immediately after, and uh, it comprises 34 first choice item of memory recognition. Um, if the score is uh, 30 or more, the presentation is credible, whilst more than five errors suggest that the performance is non-credible. The aim of the present study was to investigate how symptom coaching and test coaching affect the diagnostic efficacy and accuracy of IUP-29 and IUPM in feigning uh, for different disorders. Uh, so we have major depressive disorder, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, schizophrenia, and mild traumatic brain injury. To do so, we selected three different self-report measures to assess uh, if people presented symptoms related to the three types of uh, disorders. So the Center for Epidemiologic Studies Depression Scale to assess the uh, potential symptoms of depression, the impact of Evans Scale revised to, to assess uh, potential symptoms of uh, post-traumatic stress, stress disorder, and the Magical Ideation Scale to assess possible schizophrenia. Uh, for MTBI, we use a different procedure. So we simply ask people whether or not they have suffered from a brain injury in the last year. So if people scored higher than the selected cutoffs or answered yes to the MTBI questions, we put them in the honest group. While if they uh, answered no to the MTBI question or they scored lower than the cutoffs, then we selected them for the feigners group. Today, we're going to focus only on the fairness group, which comprises 300 people, and that we randomly assigned to two different conditions. The first condition was only symptom coaching, and the second one was symptom and test coaching. So, um, in the present study, the two groups were both given a clinical vignette depicting a situation in which a person decides to feign a specific disorder to gain external incentives. Other than this, we gave to all participants a list of symptoms of the specific disorder we asked them to feign, and then a warning not to, to exaggerate in uh, the feigning of the pathology. Uh, to the coach, to the test coaching group, we also gave um, a lecture, sort of, <laughs> on the test strategies to detect finding. So, uh, to locate this in recent literature, we can see that the other study using the SIMS uh, did something similar, only they used five different groups, but the two groups that you can see in green on the screen uh, had sort of the same procedure that we followed. Okay, so uh, the sample is uh, a total of 300 people, which didn't differ too much on any of the social demographical uh, variables. Okay, so 
from uh, the comparison between uh, the groups in the two different conditions emerges a significant difference uh, in the performance to the IOP memory, which goes in sort of an unexpected direction because uh, people who were coached both on symptoms and on tests had a worse performance. Here you can see um, the correlate the um, <laughs> um, the comparisons between the two different condition groups in the four different disorder situations um, and significant significant differences stand out regarding MDD and PTSD for both uh, for both disorders on the IUPM and for MDD also on the IUP29. This direction, uh, these uh, differences also go into the same direction as previous results, highlighting that people who were more coached uh, performed worse. Here are the sensitivity values that the test uh, um, gave out. So it uh, generally appears to be high, uh, with few CAP scores that you can see highlighted. Uh, that seems to be affected by the coaching condition. Okay, here on the scatter plot, you can see the sensitivity of the IUPM, the sensitivity of the IUP29, and uh, within the bluer um, area, you can see the sensitivity of the two tests combined. And as you can see, it shows no major differences. So uh, we can see that uh, there is an apparent paradoxical phenomena because people who were coached on diverse strategies to evade both tests and simulate symptoms had less credible profiles to both tests. And this trend appears to be especially significant for MDD, which is the most known amongst feigned disorders. Um, more specifically, looking into the differences um, for MDD, um, the um, yeah for MDD, both the profile of the IUP29 and the IUPM were less credible for um, the symptom and test coaching condition than only the symptom condition, and we can see the same trend also for PTSD. This might be explained by the fact that uh, when we gave people instructions on how to um, elude the um, test's uh, um, mechanisms to detect feigning, uh, we pose, uh, we stressed out the importance uh, of uh, more cognitive uh, uh, symptoms, such as mnemonic problems and logical and mathematical processes. And this might have influenced uh, their um, their way of responding to the test. Okay, so we have uh, a few limitations, uh, the most important of which are the non-ecological context uh, of the research, because of course, asking a person to find a to feign a disorder in a lab is different than when a person actually feigns it in real life, for example, in a juridic um, context. And also, as I previously stated, the type of test coaching, because um, for symptom coaching, we have a unanimous literature that tells us how to give people instructions on how to feign symptoms of different disorders, while Test coaching is a relatively new area of research, so uh, we still need to find one precise way uh, that we have to use when uh, we tell people how to feign uh, when they know uh, test methods to detect feigning. Conclu in conclusion, uh, symptom and test coaching are increasingly used strategies to try and evade psychological assessment measures, and researchers are called to identify novel and better strategies to evaluate response styles. 
Also, the present research highlights the accuracy of the IUPM and the IUP29 tests, both individually and combined, in detecting negative response bias of diverse disorders. And finally, and most importantly, um, the study pinpoints that coaching might not always be the best strategy to try and outsmart psychological evaluation tests, as more coaching is not equivalent to better finding. And Thank you for the attention. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The coaching has not been the type of thing, has not been Yes. No, because you provided instruction. Yes. No? And uh, you also selected the participant, no? It, with a psychological assessment. No? Mm -hmm. But what do you think about the effect of other type of hearing? For example, people with, pre with previous experience of mental uh, illness in the in a clinical or subclinical form, no? Mm -hmm. And then, the, so they, in some way, in part, no, they learn the symptoms in uh, through an incidental learning. Yeah. No? Because, uh, no, they had experience. And then also they have the experience, so a personal experience. Do you think that they can show different performances in hearing in uh, um, yes, I think that uh, that is possible. Also, um, there are different kinds of feigning a disorder. So uh, we call malingering when people are trying to get a, um, an external incentive uh, thanks to their feigning of a disorder. But also there are situations in which people have experienced a milder or a full symptomatology of a disorder and uh, they are of course more skilled <laughs> yes. on the actual feelings and symptoms of the disorder mm -hmm. so there might be a difference in this study we focused uh, only on people who didn't have a previous diagnosis and did not score uh, higher uh, than the cutoffs on uh, the selected measures of course, that is partial, but... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And then the last speaker for today is Marilyn Monaro. Oh, I was wrong, sorry. Lorenzo Silva, sorry. Yes, it is it. Okay. Voila. Nice to see back. Yeah. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for having me discussing this research and uh, the research birthed around uh, the um, relationship that exists between macro expressions and malingering and deception in general. And artificial intelligence is the most important tool for studying this type of uh, relationship. And uh, in particular, we wanted to reproduce the results that are fundable on the literature, but even to understand which may be the pitfalls of these relationships. Um, starting by a brief uh, history of my expression, uh, they were for the first time coined by Ekman and Friesen in 1969, when they uh, were evaluating some recordings of their psychiatric patient. Uh, while they were evaluating this patient, they noticed that uh, on some occasion there was uh, the emergence of specific and uh, unclear uh, changes in their muscular activity within the face. Later on, they understood that this uh, special and uh, strange um, activity was uh, indeed correlated to an inconsistency between what the patient was uh, experiencing and what he was actually saying in words. Uh, again, later on, it was clear how this MAC expression could be used to study lying uh, process, 
Indeed, uh, liars are the prototypical individual that are expressing something that actually is not perceiving uh, from an emotional point of view. Um, later on, there was uh, a lot of um, efforts to understand if um, human judges could uh, be uh, good uh, detectors of microexpression and of uh, malingering in general. But unfortunately, even when trained subjects uh, attempt to, to spot uh, malingering and microexpression, their uh, performances to the round chance level in a way that they were like giving random choices. Uh, this was clear even when uh, they, are, they were trained and they were using the facial action coding system that is the most rigorous and uh, yeah, method methodological uh, instrument to uh, assess all the uh, facial movements that we see uh, within our faces. Uh, anyway, uh, even if um, human judges obtain uh, non-satisfactory results, uh, it was clear how machine learning techniques instead could help in, uh, could stand as an aid for uh, detecting them. Indeed, machine learning techniques could work on higher level features and non-visible structures that were um, undetected to the naked eye. And before coming back to the, our, um, the structure of our machine learning uh, stack, I would like to mention that besides reproducing the results of previous studies uh, in the literature, we wanted to understand the influence, the nature of the light itself as on the detection accuracy. And we did that by uh, using two types of, st type of stimuli that were simple and complex image. Simple image as the one on the left were image in which there was uh, uh, an object on a white background, whereas complex image were images in which there were a lot of details. What we did with this image was presenting them to our pa experimental participants, asking them to um, describe the image. And what we saw to what we assumed was that when describing a complex image, there would be a bigger cognitive load experienced by the, uh, by the speaker, by the experimental subject, because of the need to handle a lot of different details. And in this way, uh, in turn, bigger cognitive load would translate in a bigger, in a bigger outflow of leaks. Leaks uh, are simple cues to reception. And so uh, in conclusion, what we were looking for was uh, um, having big, um, strongest accuracy when dealing with the detection of people handling with the complex image. Uh, this was the first aim compared to, um, alongside, sorry, the uh, reproducing the results already present in the literature. The second one was to investigate how the setting in which a lie is told could influence its detection. Usually and uh, reasonably, all the studies that are present in the literature use uh, uh, recordings, uh, fed recordings to the AI that are uh, taken from court hearings and so to, from professional uh, settings. And this doesn't make sense at all because the last uh, aim of uh, forensic uh, and lie detection procedures is to have a um, make a make an help make an aid to uh, the professional context. But we knew we wanted to understand if using even uh, lies that we will see later on, which which are the character the specific characteristic, could in a way help us in generalize the results. Um, so uh, concerning the experimental paradigm, we developed uh, an, an ad hoc um, application it was called uh, light detector application in which we made uh, two participants play against each other. They alternate in the role of the judge and of the speaker. So the speaker was presented with, a, with an image. And as I was saying before, he was asked to describe it both on weather in uh, truth or in line term. After the recording of his uh, face was made, it was sent on the device on another participant that in that case would be the judge that by seeing the recording had to uh, understand if in his opinion or her opinion was a lie or a truth uh, statement. Uh, in that way, we recorded 330 videos that later on being labeled were fed to an, uh, an AI stack that was composed on a S1 classifier, a transformer model, and a CMS network. As I was saying, uh, it was a supervised learning fashion. We use it uh, here because all the recorded videos that we had there were already labeled from the participant that uh, at the end of the registration was asked to specify to a truth lie button if the statement was truth or uh, not. 
Um, returning back on the peculiar characteristic of feature survey of the, um, of the lies here employed, differently from uh, forensic context, uh, our lies were short lasting, so they were uh, lasting uh, no more than 15 seconds, and uh, there, were, there were no memory process involved. Uh, in this way, the lies that we obtain and then we use to train our artificial intelligence were unstructured and spontaneous. With unstructured and spontaneous lies, we uh, refer to lies that were uh, made right at the moment when the participants saw the images. There was no memory recollection and simply they produced the lie at the, right, at the right same moment. In this way, the cognitive load the experience was, uh, uh, was smaller and in turn, it would be even smaller the amount of uh, cognitive uh, leaks that the machine learning could, be, you could use as, uh, as scenes. Uh, and unfortunately, what we what we noticed was that besides human judges' accuracy uh, being coherent with those of previous studies, and so being around the chance level, the accuracy fail in recognizing and in discerning between a right, uh, sorry, with the, between truth and lying statement. In a sense that this peculiar characteristic of the our lies fa were failed to be spotted by the AI. Um, this means that in future studies, it will be helpful to identify and include these various type of lies in uh, within uh, to be fed to the AI, because even if usually uh, lies within forensic context are wrong and settled and uh, usually are alibi, so are alibi that are uh, founding themselves on a memory recollection, it might be the case that a really good liar may be not like surprised from a surprising question, and that way. Uh, we should be ready to have an artificial intelligence that could spot even its malingering. Uh, in this way, acknowledging the constraints that artificial intelligence have to follow will help us to reach a percentage of accuracy that is really needed in this context because um, we're at least speaking to a professional context. In a professional context, we do have to get something that is clear and near to the 100% of accuracy. Um, as a really last uh, take home message, um, micro, micro expressions are still in demand to be studied on, but actually they are not uh, unambiguous indicators of deception. Indeed, it's really important to consider the individual differences that exist between each, uh, each other, because uh, it's, no, it's not rare that someone experience and, exp and express um, 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 uh, muscular movements that is different from someone else. Someone else. Micro expression express themselves in different ways. Someone may inhibit the muscles that I'm not able to do, and uh, someone may instead emerge with a micro expression that someone can cannot express. So, starting from the patient, from the individual we are working on, would be crucial for uh, effectively getting an accuracy that uh, is uh, big as much as possible. And without, uh, of course, uh, uh, Instead, remembering that, of course, there are other tools to increase the detectability of the lies, because macro expression, of course, are not the only tools for, uh, uh, for understanding when someone is lying or not. For example, uh, most recent studies are using even audio or text, um, or text features that, under a multimodal modality, are helping people and studies to get um, accuracy that stood around the 19 percent, 90 percent. Sorry. Um, thank you for your time and for listening. Uh, I'm sure about uh, no, you, um, your reporting that they use a new database. Mm -hmm. no? yeah. So it may be, and uh, you didn't replicate, no, you expected no, uh, the specific direction and the direction of the forest, but the power of the text was not so strong, like the literature. Uh -huh. yeah. You think mm -hmm. yes, that uh, the Feature of the new databases that you use uh, can uh... employ. Yes. Okay. Um. Usually in 
in the, in the other studies that are within the literature, they always use the same database. It was the one from, I didn't mention it, it was the database from Perez Rosas and colleagues. And all the studies, um, at least the, um, the most famous one concerning this topic, use this database to train their uh, um, artificial intelligence. And what I was referring to is that uh, even if this is an actual uh, forensic context, and so it's helpful to be used as a um, certain point, it should be even considered to use uh, a new database like the one we used, but even on another, maybe in another context to generalize the results. Because in the, in the context that we used, that was um, uh, on site, people could, um, I mean, there was no constraints at all about um, having to report an alibi or having to protect themselves. So their cognitive load was lower and in turn, even the, the leaks, uh, sorry, the flow of leaks, they were communicating to um, the other participants. And it may happen even in forensic context that there would be a good liar and we have to be ready. Uh, the artificial intelligence have to work even on this type of uh, uh, database in order to get better results. So we, we hope so, we hope to generalize the results even to other database. Another question mm -hmm. that I'm curious about the next step, no? I really, uh, the results are uh, your discussion, no? It's very clear. Uh, you mentioned that the problem now is uh, how to improve, uh, no, your algorithm yep. to capture the ambiguous lies. Yep. Do you have uh, some idea on how to go on with uh, research so kind of input that you can add yeah uh, for example uh, we were thinking about um, using uh, I have to okay I don't find it but anyway uh, we were thinking about using even um, um, longer uh, statement and speech because another characteristic feature of this study was that uh, the line statement were will really short in time it was like 15 seconds and usually in the other studies it was like, uh, at least um, 20 minutes. And maybe using a uh, longer uh, database and so longer uh, statement to be fed to the AI could ameliorate the performances. This is a speculation, of course, no. but it could be a solution. No, no, it's clear. Because one of the comments was why don't you train the, 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 the algorithm with the videos that participants when you ask them to be honest yeah. and, uh, and not. Uh, no, no, it's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Paolo. Okay, I lost. Uh, where is uh, here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Paolo, I'm here. I'm trying to modify like this. Okay. I have a, a question for Angelica. Sure. Angelica? She's coming. Because the results of Angelica are really interesting, but uh, are contradictory about the previous research. Because the coaching usually help the subject to be um, not uh, so overt with the symptoms. So, uh, do, do you know, um, I don't know uh, uh, your rule in this study, but uh, how was the coaching? The coaching about the test and the coaching about the pathology, the symptoms? Um, the symptoms coaching was um, uh, made through a vignette depicting a scene about a person um, in a situation for example, for the finding of major depressive disorders, we usually use a vignette that uh, depicts a person um, in a situation in which uh, um, he hurts himself 
uh, sleeping on the floor of his office and he starts uh, having a lot of back pain, but uh, there is uh, no way to prove medically that he has it. So uh, at a certain point, in order to get uh, um, a medical insurance and a leave from work, um, he, he decides to feign a depressive symptomatology so that he can have this leave from work because of a psychological problem. Uh, so it is a situation that the person have, has to read and they have to sort of um, uh, depict him themselves themselves in that situation, thinking that uh, uh, they are really in pain, but that their pain isn't recognized. So um, that is sort of the motive that we give them. And then we give a list of the major symptoms of the disorder, as stated by the DSM, and uh, they have to learn them before taking the test. Um, whilst for the test coaching, uh, I am less familiar with the procedure that uh, was used, but uh, it, um, it was about telling people how the IEP 29 items uh, about logical and mathematical um, um, <laughs> wait a second. Um, yes, uh, basically it was about telling them that the tests also um, use the detection strategies, not also not only for um, um, emotional symptoms such as uh, angst or anxious uh, or things like that but also or sadness but also for uh, different kind of more cognitive problems regarding memory regarding logic uh, and mathematical um, capabilities that uh, these disorders actually affect and the same thing was done uh, uh, in explaining uh, the, um, the, strat the detection strategy of the IUP memory which is a memory test, uh, only not really being one. <laughs> okay, and uh, have you done a, a scale about the pressure, for example, on these subjects, in order to know if they know the depression, they have the depression, they have had the, 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 the depression? Well, uh, there, there, was, uh, there were the screening tests, uh, which were the GSD, the ESR, um, and so on, that were used uh, to detect whether people had a symptomatology that might have been linked to one of the disorders they were asked to find, to feign, in order not to um, not to include in the feigning sample people that would could have had uh, some symptomatic uh, expression of the disorder itself. Okay, Angelica. Thank you, thank you so much. I thank to... you for your interest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Hi, Paolo. Do you have other questions, comments? Oh. No, all the all the speakers, uh, all the presentation uh, were really very interesting. And uh, according to me, each presentation gives us uh, a take-on message that is uh, important. The take-on message of the first presentation and of the last one is that artificial intelligence could help our work. And uh, then I'm really impressed on the work of uh, um, Lorenzo, I believe, no, not Lorenzo, Alessandro is the second uh, speaker. Um, the take home message is uh, that probably uh, the computer test is uh, uh, more convenient to do uh, in order to understand the subject that have, that give a positive impression. So uh, is uh, a really good take home message. We have also to implement our, the, the, the way in which uh, we do um, the, 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 the assessment. 
And um, I think it is uh, uh, a really good, good, good message. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you very much. Thank you to Thank you, you, Paolo. To all speakers and the listener. Thank you. Grazie a tutti. Thank you, Paola. Piacere di averti conosciuto, Paolo. Piacere mio. Grandissimo. Ciao. Speriamo di vederci presto. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.